This is Andy Perrault for Boxing News. I'm joined by Josh Kelly here in London. Josh, always a pleasure. How is life treating you? Good, Paul. Good. Sun's out. Golf's the fun. I'm ready to, f I'm ready to fucking play golf, so I'm happy. So I'll try not to keep you for too long. Um, a few weeks out now from fight night. How good does it feel to be back in camp coming towards the end of another one? Yeah, it's good, mate. I've been in the gym just learning, constantly building. I'm feeling more mature now. I'm feeling like I'm coming to my prime, so it's, um, it's time to put another show on. Obviously, going into the, the Troy Williamson fight, there's a lot of talk about kind of issues you had going before that. How good does it feel to be going into a camp without any problems now, on the back of a big win, and looking forward to a bright future? Yeah, I've squashed all that. People said I couldn't do 12 rounds. People said this. People said that. But I did 12 rounds under pressure in a high in a high pressure short of fight where there was a lot on the line, and I I, did, I, did, I felt as I did it with ease. So. That's just the start. There's plenty more from when I come from. There's actually more than that, but um, we save that for the big, big nights when they come down when they come down the road. But all that's been squashed. The weight suitors, I feel strong, I feel mature. Um, going up this new weight, I feel class. Um, all in demons of the past, that's all been squashed in that one fight, 12 rounds. Just I could have done 15, 20 rounds, to be honest. So um, I'll make the future looking bright. It did seem so comfortable for you on the night, Josh. Was it a surprise to you, despite obviously anything you had going on previously, how much of maybe of an underdog you were heading into it with the bookies? Nah, I mean, a lot of people bet, a lot of people who put the bet on, sometimes, nah, not a lot of them, but I'd say people who don't, don't, they're not seeing what I'm putting in training camp, they're not seeing the years I've did, they're not seeing me in the gym. So let them do what they want to, let them, let, let them bet, let the casual fans bet, it's, it's part of the sport and it, it's part of what makes the sport great. So if you didn't have if you didn't have an underdog and a, and a guy who's coming on top, then the sport would be a bit bland. So I'm glad that, I'm glad the tables were turned and I was the underdog for once, I felt good. Corzo, talk to me about him, what do you know about him, what are you expecting from him? He's undefeated, his game, he's world, he's world ranked number nine in the WBO. So. It's all pushing us towards that number one spot where I want to be, I want to be challenging for world titles. Within this year, I want to win a world title, um, preferably in a stadium of light. So, yeah, it'd be unbelievable. It's big aspirations, Josh, obviously, because with the way the titles are currently tied up, you expect if Tim Zhu comes through um, a campo, then he'll get his cracker, uh, Charlo. So, is it achievable, do you think, with him this year, or do you expect them to fragment? No, I mean, I think the titles will. Charlo hasn't boxed for a while. They could, dis they could just disperse. But if they do, then that uh, mean I'm ranked in all the governing bodies. That means I get, I get a shot. I can get a shot at any of them, and any of the top guys. And the way I'm performing in the gym, the guys who I'm sparring with, the guys who I'm, I've been sparring with for years, who I'm operating with, I know I'm at world level. I just need the time to prove it. These guys are all you, you come to see. You come to see. What do you show on fight night then? This fight now, you soon see. <laughs> um, just away from that one, Josh, just looking towards the future, you mentioned world titles, but I know the kind of M fight is one which will always be linked to your name, whether or not it happens is another question, but Connor's kind of played it down uh, as to whether or not you two will cross paths. Why do you think that is? Uh, I don't think he wants to risk, I don't think he wants to risk me. There's no chance of risking me this stage in his career. He's, 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 he was at that Eubank fight, but I mean, I've had big wins, he hasn't had no big wins like me. British title wins, I've boxed legit opponents. He hasn't, he hasn't boxed anybody yet of, of sort, of who's got real substance. He's boxed people at the end of the career, who's done and come up weights, who's really lightweight, light weight to light weight, but he hasn't boxed no one who's, who's come game and is in the prime, like a Troy or like an Avenation or someone like that. So he's, uh, he's just playing these little man games, but let him do that. One thing I'm interested in, obviously, you hold that British title. Do you think that's a somewhat of a selling point because he's never boxed or, or held that himself? No, he's never he's never boxed for an English level title. Never mind a British title. At welterweight, not never mind well, never mind super welterweight. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm I'm good where I am. Let him keep doing it. I don't think the thing is with Connor. I think he'll box someone who's who's like a Manny Pacquiao or a Kell Brook or someone like that who's had a great career at the end of the career and say, yeah, look, if if he wins, it's just a, one of them where you might have to wait till he comes a cropper against one of them to even get a fight like that. But I'm on my journey, it's not about him, it's about me. So I'm looking at my guys in my division, looking at the top. So I'm, I'm, I'm legit, I'm, I've proved that I can come back and, from adversity and prove all of that was wrong. I'm legit, so I'm coming for that top spot.
obviously mentioned him those names for Connor. He's looking at a potential re uh, rematch, sorry, a re announced date for Eubank Jr. Rather, what would be your thoughts if he was to share the ring with Chris Eubank Jr. Pretty much a year on from when they was originally scheduled to. People who watch it, it's with Eubank and Ben, because the dads at the end of the day would sell the fight for them. Um, that's it, really. For yourself, I know you said that you're trying to cement yourself as one of the top contenders at 154. For most people, at 154, I think that's Liam Smith's the best in Britain, obviously, with what he's achieved, where he's currently at, and the fights he's lining up. Do you think at some point it's a fight you'll explore with your team and consider? I'm not sure. Me and Liam Smith are good friends, so. And Liam's at 160 at the moment as a middleweight, but I mean, I'm coming, like I said, I'm coming for that. I'm coming for the top spot. So anyone who's around that top spot, then, if it makes sense, we'll fight. Is it difficult, even though you are good friends, for you to claim and to make yourself at number one in the 154 division? Granted, Liam's currently a 160, but would you take the fight if it was there? No, it wouldn't be hard to make me to his friends, but I just don't want to bad mouth someone over if, if I've got that sort of thing. I've got respect for Liam, he's done a lot in the sport, but he's, in, he, he's at that thing at the moment. If he wants to come to 154, then that's another another conversation. Um, Josh, just kind of moving forwards, um, moving backwards rather, so this past weekend you saw a campmate of yours unfortunately fall short in his world title tilt out in Belfast. That is Michael Conlon's loss to Luis Alberto Lopez. Just your thoughts on what went wrong for Mick? I'm not sure, I don't think Mick, Mick Really, was himself on the night. Um, I, could he have boxed more? Could, in hindsight, could he have done this and that? I'm not sure. The kid was tough and strong and just seemed to walk through everything. He looked like he'd take a shot off a heavyweight, never mind a, 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 what, a super featherweight or whatever it was. You know? Was it super? Was it Bantam? Featherweight, yeah? Never mind a featherweight, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's one of them. Um, in hindsight, we say a lot of things, but it's about what Mick wants to do now and what he wants to do with his, regarding him, his family, and his career. It's, 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 it's on him, it's just, he'll figure it out, he's experienced enough. I didn't mention how difficult of a loss it was for the gym because of how close of a bond you all share. Um, what's it been like for you personally to see somebody who's in a, a world level fighter, he's shown you time and time again, fall short on what was his real big moment and big night? It's, uh, it's, it does hurt you as a gym mate, it does really hurt you. And to come in there next week and start training him, it's like, it's a bit crap, but you have to sort of block it out in a sense, but I mean, Mick got unlucky, he was winning that fight with Lee Wood and that happened and I think this guy, this Lopez will go down in the division as one. In a couple of years he could be one of them where you sit there and think, he's, a, he's done everything in the division, he's an absolute animal because he's an orthodox, he's athletic, he punches hard, he's tough, just, he's just a good world champion and when them fights get made, if sometimes it's just who turns up on the night and uh, Mick, Mick, Mick will figure things out, he's mature enough. I know it's not your place to say, but people questioning whether or not he might return to the ring. Do you think we see him come back? That's not my thing this year. Um, I believe Mick's good enough to win a world title, but it's on his terms and what he wants to do. It's, it's, he's, he's his own man. That's fair enough. And just a few other fights, just get your thoughts on before I let you go. Um, some fights announced, some on the horizon. A man you know well, Josh Taylor, faces TV Mo Lopez next weekend. Just your thoughts on that fight? Well, it's a big fight. It's a tough fight, exciting fight. I know they're both game, I know Josh is definitely game, I know Lopez likes a little bit of trash talking and whatever, so it's, it's going to be a great build-up and a, and a good fight, I think it's going to be a, a fireworks. How do you expect it to go? I'm on the fence, obviously I'm rooting for Josh, but I'm, I'm totally on the, um, on the fence. I think if Josh can put similar work in he did against Progre and sort of use his, if he's big, Josh is a big uh, light welterweight, if he can use his size and he's done everything correct, then I think he can come, he can come out on top. I was about to say, get those splinters out, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, just another one, Spence Crawford was announced the other day. Everybody's excited for that. Just your take, please, Josh. Who comes out on top? And Crawford. Crawford's just a, he's adapt in every fight. He seems to adapt in every fight, every situation. He's weathered, he's hard, he's been there, he's experienced. I'm not saying Spence isn't, but Crawford seems as though he's overcome, overcome all challenges which has been through in front of him, so I think Crawford. Somebody you know well from your amateur days, Anthony Joshua, um, has come out of that. He's not going to be pursuing the fight with Tyson Fury, according to his team. Just your thoughts, do you think that's a, a correct move? Do you think he should still be visiting that fight? I don't know, I've just sort of took, I've, um, I've took my eye off the division a little bit. It's all a bit mad. It's like someone's seeing this, someone's seeing that next month. 
And I'm just like, how old, man? Just sort it out. Just someone fight for a big fight. We all want to see it. He's have all got the door in the bank. The money's stupid at the top. You've got titles there to win. Let's just put them on the line and get them in the mix. So that's the way it is, isn't it? I don't know. How frustrating is that to see? You've just mentioned kind of all the back and forth in the heavyweight division when you consider we've just had Spence Crawford announce, you just saw Haney Lomachenko, Taylor Lopez next weekend, um, Tank and Ryan as well. All these brilliant fights have been made, you know, Cameron Taylor, as, as Adam mentioned to me, and yet the heavyweight mix just seems to always hit a stumbling block. Yeah, it's a big boys, big money, big politics, big promoters, uh, big egos, you got everything mixed in the mix, aren't you? You're like, what can you see? That's just a, this is a recipe for disaster, isn't it, really, to be honest, but... See, I think someone just needs to lay it down and just say, listen, if the money's there and the titles are there, I'm taking the fight and that's it. And then, because they're all coming towards the twilight of their careers anyway, so just keep it moving. All right, Josh, it's a pleasure as always, of course. Good luck on fight night and thanks for speaking to me. Thank you, brother. Cheers, man.